Greetings, thank you for tuning in to this online service here at All People's Church. We want to thank all of you who have been connecting week after week uh, in this manner. Uh, I know it's been a long time for us uh, not to gather together in one place and worship God together, but uh, we are going to continue like this for uh, some time until we uh, feel that uh, it is good for us to gather together or it's the right time for us to come back together and start meeting. So thank you for being patient. Thank you for journeying together through this time. Uh, we, are, we are all in this together and we will come out together, uh, come out stronger, better, and uh, uh, victorious through this season. We, um, today uh, is our Supernatural Sunday, the last Sunday of the month where our message is just to bring a word of encouragement and then to pray for God to do wonderful things in the lives of uh, each of us as we um, you know, come before Him. So I trust that you've come with expectation that God will do something for you and meet you at the point of your need. Each one of us have different needs in our lives, different areas in which we want God to work in. And uh, we come together these Supernatural Sundays expecting God to touch us, to minister to us, and to meet us at the point of our need. So we know that uh, we know and experience God. Now before we get into uh, the message, we're going to do our declaration together. So we will do that, and then we will get into the Word, and then get into a time of prayer. Good morning. Just before we make our declaration, we're going to read um, a verse. This is from Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So this verse talks about two different outcomes. One is death, which means um, life coming to an end. And figuratively, it could mean things coming to a standstill, everything negative, no progress. And the other outcome is life, which is um, there's living. There's, figuratively, it could mean things that are, uh, that are thriving and things that are positive and a lot of progress. Uh, but if you see that these two outcomes are tied to a common factor, and that is the power of the tongue something that initiates and drives these two outcomes uh, is the power of the tongue, which means the words that we speak. The words that we speak over circumstances, the words that we speak over challenges, the words that we speak over ourselves, the words that we speak over our family, and so on. And especially the words that we speak when we are angry, when we are frustrated, the words that we speak when we are impatient. Now, these words actually drive certain outcomes. And the second part of that verse says that those who love it will eat its fruit. So today, as we make our declaration, let's be mindful of the words that we speak. As we speak the word of God, as we declare the word of God over our lives, over our situations, over, our, over the relationships that we have, you know, we will eat its fruit. We will experience the power, the outcome of those words. And this is how God has put things in place. This is how God has designed things in place. So if you have your Bibles, why don't you hold your Bibles high, lift your Bibles, and uh, let's say this out loud. Let's say it bold and strong. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I am saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I am a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of his blessing to many people. I receive his word, I believe his word, and I live by his word. Christ is my master, and to him I am in absolute surrender. I present myself as a new wineskin to receive the new wine and fresh oil being poured out on me. God releases new things and a new work of His Spirit in me and through me. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to also welcome those who are joining us for the very first time. If this is your very first time with us at All People's Church on an online service, we'd really like to know that you've connected with us. There are a couple of things you can do. You could go to our church website, which is apcwo.org, and on the far right corner is a mail icon. You can click on it and subscribe there. Uh, just enter your email ID and, and uh, let us know that uh, you've connected with us and this is your first time. So we could uh, recognize you that way. Uh, and then we'll keep you informed of things that are coming on in the weeks. Uh, another mention I want to make is uh, we've started this a few Sundays back. After our service on Sundays, we have a time where our pastoral team is available to pray for people one-on-one, -on -one, personally. So uh, that information is available in, in the live chat. And uh, so what you would do is after the service, you would connect to the information given to you on Zoom. So you would connect to us and our pastoral team will, will be there and we go on a first come, first serve basis. Each one is assigned to a, a meeting room. Uh, so you can talk to one of our pastors and uh, share your requests and people will be there to pray for you. So that happens every Sunday online. So we'd encourage you if you need personal time uh, for prayer and ministry uh, to take advantage of that. Of course, we're gonna pray today after the service and uh, we will expect God to do wonderful things. Today I wanna talk to us, just remind us about the mercy and grace of God, the mercy and the grace of God. And uh, I want us to just spend some time in Psalm 107. So if you have your Bible, uh, you could open your Bible to Psalm 107. We're just gonna be there in Psalm 107 for the entire message. And uh, also if you're taking notes, you could uh, you know, take notes from there, Psalm 107. Now we're not gonna be able to read every verse and explain every verse, but I will just uh, highlight some of the key things that we see here in Psalm 107. The psalm really talks to us about the mercy of God. Uh, the very first verse is so beautiful. It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. See, that's the true picture of God. That's the true nature of God. He is a good God. He's a God of goodness. He's a God who is good all the time. So he says, give thanks to God. Why? He's a good God. And those of you listening today, I just want to remind you, I know it may be a very simple reminder that God is a good God. God is not mad at you. God is not angry with you. God is not a bad God. He's a good God. You know, in, in times past, preachers used to say, God is a good God and the devil is a bad devil. Now, that's, that sounds like a Sunday school statement, but that's something all of us need to embrace, that God's a good God. Uh, he is good give thanks to the Lord and then it tells us his mercy endures forever now I just want to just talk a little bit about that word mercy you know that word mercy throughout this psalm in fact Psalm 107 is a psalm uh, whose emphasis is the mercy of God this whole psalm is talking to us about the mercies of God and uh, if you look at the last verse in Psalm 107 he says whoever is wise will observe these things and they will understand the loving kindness of the Lord so in this psalm that word mercy uh, in Hebrew uh, it throughout the psalm it's translated uh, in some places it's translated as goodness and in some places it's translated as loving kindness it's the same word the word mercy is translated as goodness and loving kindness so in many places throughout this psalm if you would look you now it says uh, uh, repeatedly we saw it in verse 1 we see it again in verse 8 oh that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness it's the same word, mercy or loving kindness. So it's used interchangeably. Give thanks for his goodness. That's in verse 8. And again in verse 15, give thanks for his goodness. Again in verse 21, give thanks for his goodness. And again in verse 31, give thanks for his goodness. And as we read in the last verse, he's saying, the psalm is written so you will understand the loving kindness or understand the mercies, understand the goodness of God. So this psalm really is a psalm that opens up for us 
an understanding of the mercies of God, of the goodness of God, of the loving kindness of God. So we're going to, you know, feed on this psalm. We're just going to enjoy this psalm today, feed on it. And the main thing that's coming out of this psalm is uh, 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 understanding of the mercy of God, of his loving kindness, of his goodness. Uh, uh, of, of God. And what does it tell us in verse 1? It says, His mercy endures forever. That means the mercies of God, the loving kindness of God, the goodness of God never runs out. Uh, it stands, it, it continues through time. Uh, it is there enduring through the ups and downs of our lives through all the things that we go through in life, you know, we are the ones who are transient. We are the ones who are changing. We are the ones who are the experiencing different things in life, but there is something that's constant, and that's the mercies of God, or the goodness of God, or the loving kindness of God. So if you've got somebody sitting next to you, tell them his goodness, his mercies, his loving kindness endures forever. Just turn around to them and just tell them his mercies endures forever. And I think we need to be reminded of that, that the mercies of God are, are constant. They are enduring they, they, they never change, or as we know uh, in Lamentations, the Bible says his mercies are new every morning, meaning they are fresh. They're not stale. You, you, you don't get the leftover from yesterday. Uh, you don't get, you know, the little bit from yesterday. No, they are fresh. They're abundant every day. His mercies are new every day. So now, uh, having understood that this psalm is about the mercies of God, uh, what is very really interesting is that in this psalm, the psalmist brings out four life situations, or I would just use the word predicaments, uh, that uh, God's people found themselves in. Uh, and then he talks about how the mercies of God intervened in those predicaments. Uh, if you want to, you could even look at, there's a fifth one, uh, which we may not dwell. I'll just mention it in passing. We'll focus on just on the first four uh, predicaments. So what, what we see in the psalm is, the psalm is, is is describing a, a particular situation, a predicament. Uh, he uses the word distress. Uh, we find ourselves in that, and then he so says what the mercies of God uh, does for us. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're just going to look at these four uh, predicaments, these four situations, and see how the mercies of God intervenes for us in those situations. And some of us listening, we may connect with one or more of these uh, situations described here in this psalm. And, uh, and I just trust that it will come as, uh, not only as an encouragement to you, but it will come as the word of the Lord to you, saying that if you find yourself in that predicament, in that life situation, the mercies of God are ready to do what he did for them. In, the, in Bible times, he's going to do for you and me here and now, today. So I'm just going to, I'm just, you know, I'm just using four key words uh, to identify these predicaments. You can use different words if you like, uh, but this is, you know, just for uh, uh, communication purposes. The first predicament we see there in verse four, uh, and I'm skipping many of these verses. We're not going to read the entire psalm. We're just looking at zeroing in on these four predicaments and how the mercies of God brings about a change uh, in, uh, in these four situations. The first one in verse 4, he says, and these are all real life situations that the people of God encountered. So he says, they, that's God's people, they wandered in the wilderness in a desolate way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. He led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city for a dwelling place. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. So the first one is he's talking about the wilderness. You know, 
What, what about the wilderness? The wilderness is a place where the very we are deprived of the very necessities of life. You know, he talks about the fact that they were in, in a wilderness and uh, they had no place to dwell. They were hungry, they were thirsty, and they were about to faint. Meaning, they were in such a situation where the very necessities, the things that they needed, the basic things, they didn't have. Uh, and, and that's the wilderness situation. And I, I, and I don't know if there are some of you listening that you find yourself in a wilderness situation where the very necessities, the very basic things that you need are a struggle uh, like these people. Now, it is very interesting here. It says they wandered into this, meaning, uh, you know, it's, it's like they kind of drifted away and they found themselves there. It was not that they planned to go there. Uh, they just went, you know, they were wandering. They kind of drifted away into that place. And here they find themselves in the wilderness. So what do they do? It says here, and you find this throughout the psalm, and all four predicaments, the people do the same thing. It says, they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he repeats this in all of the four situations. What do the people do? They cry out to God in their trouble. They cry out to God in their distress. They cry out to God in their predicament. And then what does God do? It says, he delivered them out of of their distresses. He brought them out of it. And then notice it says here, he led them forth by the right way. So contrast, in the beginning, they wandered off into a desolate way, but when God intervened, he led them. They were not wandering, they were being led. And they were, they were not going off in a desolate way, in a way that would lead to destruction, but he leads them in the right place. Path. So God brings them out of their wilderness, how? By leading them into the right path. And so that is the intervention God brings into our lives when we find ourselves in a wilderness place. When the very necessities of life are being stripped off, when the things that you know were there are suddenly gone. Now, uh, you, you may not have even recognized this coming. You just wandered off and it led you into this place of desolation. But God's intervention is coming to you today. The same God who worked in their lives is about to work in your life. And God will lead you. He will guide you. He will order your steps into the right way. Into the place where you really, into the way that you really need to be going. So that what will happen? happen, you will find all your needs taken care of. Like it says here, they found a city, they found a dwelling place. And he says, oh, that man would give thanks to God for his mercy. You know, that's the mercy of God. That's the goodness of God. That's the loving kindness of God, that he intervenes in our lives and brings us out of the wilderness, out of our own wanderings, into those desolate places. And he leads us into the right path so that we could come into the city, a dwelling place, and find our needs taken care of and dwell where God indeed wants us to dwell. And that's why in verse 8 he says, give thanks to God for his mercy. Give thanks to God for his goodness. The second predicament we see here is, is starting there in verse 10. Uh, we will read those few verses. He says, those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death bound in affliction and irons, verse 11, because they rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought, brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and broke their chains in pieces. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he has broken the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron in two. Now, the second predicament, I will just use the word darkness, right? So here, yeah, now people find themselves in a very dark place. Now, how did they get there? It says in verse 11, it says, they rebelled against the words of God. You know, 
sometimes we people are rebellious, right? We do things we know we're not supposed to be doing. So it says here, they rebelled against the words of God. They despised the counsel of the Most High. So, you know, God was speaking to them. They said, God, keep quiet. I want to do my own thing. You know, and sometimes we people are like that. We tend to be rebellious. We want our own way. We think we are smarter than God. We think, uh, you know, God doesn't really know what I need. I'll take care of myself. God, please just stay out of this. You know, that's what these people did. They rebelled against the words of God. They despised the counsel of God. But where did it take them? Verse 10 says they landed up in a place that was dark, uh, uh, that was like the shadow of death. And it says they found themselves prisoners in affliction and iron. I mean, they, they got trapped. And they got trapped in a dark place, meaning it was a hopeless place. It, there's no light. You're bound. You're enslaved. And it wasn't God who did it to you or me. It was our willful rebellion against God. We knew better, but we just chose to go our own way. And then we find ourselves in that place. You know, and so what happened? God said, okay, that's where you go. And so what happened? Uh, they were brought down with labor. They were really cast down. There was a sense of hopelessness and everything. But how good God is. It says there in verse 13, then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. You know, this is again a common thing that we find in all these four situations, that we cry out to God from whatever situation we are in. Whether you're in the wilderness that you kind of wandered in there unknowingly and went off into a desolate place, or whether you find yourself in this dark place, imprisoned, uh, bound to something that has enslaved you, that has trapped you. Maybe it's a situation you've got yourself into. Maybe it's a financial trap. Maybe it's a sin trap. Whatever thing that has enslaved you, and it's dark, it, there's no, there doesn't seem to be any way out. There's one thing you and I can do. We can cry out to God in our trouble. And thank God for his mercy. That's the whole purpose of this psalm. It tells us, when they cried out to the Lord in the trouble, it says, he saved them out of their distresses. And I want you to know that no matter how dark your situation is, and no matter even if you recognize, I was a rebel, I went into this, I want you to know the mercies of God endures forever Today, in your darkest pit, with confidence, we can tell you God is good and his mercy is available for you. In your lowest depths, we can tell you with absolute confidence, his mercy is available for you. There is no situation that is too dark. There is no situation that is too deep. There is no situation that is too hopeless for the mercy of God. So it says they cried out to God in his mercy. He saved them. He saved them. You know, sometimes we think like this. You know, God is going to tell me, you deserve it for being so rebellious. No, 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 no. He saved them. He came to them in their trouble and he brought them out of their distresses. Notice verse 14. He brought them out of their darkness, out of that shadow of death, and he broke their chains. The things that enslaved them, he broke it. I want you to know, you might be feeling like, who, who is going to break the chains that enslave me? You know, the Bible wants you to know there's a God in heaven who's a God who is good, who's a God of mercy. And he's not only God of goodness and mercy, he's a God of great power. That his mercy will break the chains that enslave you. His mercy can bring you out of the darkness that you find yourself in. In. It says, he brought them out of the darkness. Verse 14, he broke their chains in pieces. And God will do the same thing for you today. That today, the chains that have enslaved you will fall off from you because of the mercies of God. And therefore, it says in verse 15, Oh, that man would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness. That is, for his, for his mercy, for his loving kindness. God is a kind God. He's kind to you. And he's willing to do this for you. You see, the Bible in, in, in the New Testament, in James chapter 2, verse 13, it says that mercy 
triumphs over judgment. You see, sometimes people present God as a mad God who's ready to judge every person. But really, the New Testament says, mercy triumphs over judgment. And I want you to know that in your situation, if you identify with this predicament, maybe uh, you say, yeah, you know, you, that's what happened to me. Listen, the mercy of God will triumph over judgment. The mercy God is ready to be merciful to you and not just judge you, but you need to do what the Bible says these people did, that is turn to God and cry out to Him. Turn to God and cry out to Him. Acknowledge, God, I was rebellious. God, I despised the counsel. I rejected your words and I just went off on my own way. But God, I know you're a God who is kind, who is good, whose mercy endures forever. So I cry out to you and I want to assure you, you will see the work of God take place in your life. The third predicament, the third predicament that we see here in the psalm uh, begins there in verse 17. Uh, it says, fools, uh, because of their transgression, because of their iniquities were afflicted, uh, their soul abhorred or manner of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful work to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. So the third predicament, I will just use the word sickness. Now, uh, the psalm is telling us that uh, people, they were foolish, and because of their sin, they found themselves in a place where they were sick. Uh, they couldn't even eat their food. Uh, they were getting close to dying. They were on, the, on their deathbeds. Now, uh, while it is true in this particular case, we want to understand that not every sickness is just because of sin. Uh, sometimes it is, and we are we neglect our own body, and uh, uh, you know uh, we, we do things we're not supposed to be doing, and then it of course hurts our body, and we we may find ourselves in those kinds of situations. But we also know that not every sickness, not not every time, uh, not every. Uh, a physical problem, a sickness is because of sin. It could be because of other reasons. But the point I want to bring our attention to is this, that these people, they couldn't even eat. They were so sick. Uh, they were up on their deathbed. That's in verse 18. But in that moment, in that affliction, they cried out to God. And what does he do? He saves them out of the distresses. Verse 20 says, he sent his word and healed them. God sent his word and healed them. And once again, it says, give thanks to God for his goodness, for his mercies, for his wonderful works. And so I want to say that same thing to you and me. You know, whatever the reason is of how that sickness came about, don't worry too much about the reason. Look to God who's the cure. Maybe you're there where even just eating food is a difficulty. Maybe you're on that deathbed close to the gates of death, like it says here. But there is a God in heaven who sends his word, and his word heals us. And that's what I want to bring our attention to. Today, the word of God is being sent to you. And the word of God is telling you and me, that there is a God who is great in mercy, who is a good God, who is a God of loving kindness. And if we call out to him, he sends his word and heals us. He brings us back to health so that we can offer to him the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And right after this sermon, when we pray, that's what we're going to expect, that God, who is Jehovah Rapha, God, who is the Lord of a healer, because he's a good God, because he's a kind God, because he's a God of mercy, will bring healing to you by the power of his word that's coming to you through this medium today, that the word of God will bring healing to you. The last predicament that we see in Psalm 107 begins there in verse 23. It talks about people 
who go down to the sea in ships, who do business on great waters. They see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep, for he commands and rises the stormy wind which lifts up the waves. It says in 26, uh, they see these waves mounting up to the heavens and falling down to the depth. Their soul melts because of trouble. Verse 27, they reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are, are, and are at their wit's end. Then they cry out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brings them out of their distresses. He calms the storm so that its waves are still. Then they are glad because they are quiet, and he guides them to their desired haven. Verse 31, Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the assembly of the people and praise him in the company of the elders. So the fourth one, the fourth predicament has to do in the area of business. And I'm just using the word business. Uh, you may use any other word. But it talks about people who are merchants and they're on the ships and they're out on the seas about their going about their business. Now, you and I may not be doing the same thing. Our uh, business may be something else. Uh, you may be working in, a, in the IT industry. You may be in, a, in the education, in education or some other area. But here, look at it. It says here, as these merchants are out on the great waters and the seas, they just, that's their normal thing. That's what they do. But suddenly, they face these storms that are huge. And uh, uh, they're, they're shaken to and fro. And then it tells us there in verse 27, they are at their wit's end. Meaning, they don't know what to do. It's like, we don't know how to handle a situation like this. We've been doing this for year in and many years, but we are now in this situation that we are at the, our wit's end. We don't know how to handle this. And so what do they do? It says, verse 28, they cry out to the Lord in their trouble and he brings them out of their distress. He calms the storm and then he brings them to their desired haven and he brings them to their final destination. You know, because of all that we are going through, there are so many people, professionals, who have been impacted by the pandemic, by the, the global, globally, have been affected by that. And maybe some of us, who are listening to this message, you identify with this particular situation. See, you know, that's true of me. I've been doing this for years, but right now, I find myself in the middle of a storm. And I'm at my wit's end. I mean, I, have, I can't figure a way out of this. It seems like I'm gonna sink because of the waves of the storm. And, and, and of course, I'm, I'm speaking metaphorically, but what is actually happening in your uh, field of work or in your industry or in your professional life uh, seems like that. And you are at your wits and God, I don't know what to do. But the Bible says, they cried out to God in their trouble. And God brought them out of their distresses. And that's what we believe God will do for you and me. You see, when we are at our wit's end and we don't know what to do, God, the situation is a little too much for me. I can't figure a way out of this. I don't know how to resolve this problem. I don't know how to come out of this situation. There is an answer. It is the mercy of God. It is God who's available to intervene in our life situations. And what I want to encourage each one of us to do is to cry out to the Lord in the middle of our distresses. And notice, He calms the storm. He uh, uh, stills the waves and he guides them to the desired heaven. God will calm your storm. He will still the waves and he will guide you to your desired haven, to your place of blessing, to your place of well-being. God will do that. So today we are going to pray. There's, there's a lot more in the psalm. Uh, we haven't necessarily covered it. You know, you could look at a fifth situation that's in verse 39, talking about oppression and so on. But I just wanted to, wanted to look at these four predicaments. You know, whether it's a wilderness situation, whether it is a dark situation, whether it's a sickness situation, or whether it's a workplace or a business situation, there is a God in heaven who is ready to intervene. And what we need to do 
is to cry out to him in our distresses, and he is more than able, more than willing, in his mercy to intervene. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. I want us all to say that. Let us say it as an acknowledgement of who our God is, so that we can reassure ourselves about the goodness of God, and about the mercy of God, and about the grace of God. So let's all say this together. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, and His mercy endures forever. Now thank God for His mercy, thank God for His grace. You know, in the mercy of God, God prevents us from receiving the judgment we deserve. That's the mercy of God. You see, the Bible has a very important principle. The Bible says, whatever a man sows, that's what he'll reap. That's, that's a law. Now, if all of us had to reap of the wrong we have sown, we'll be in big trouble. But for the mercy of God. That's where the mercy of God comes and says, you've sown a lot, bad things. But my mercy will override the judgment. Mercy triumphs over judgment. That's the mercy of God. It keeps us from receiving the judgment we deserve. And there is the grace of God. All of this is part of God's goodness, His mercy and grace. The grace of God gives us what we do not deserve. So we don't qualify by our own selves. We could never qualify by our own selves. But God says, I'll still give it to you because of grace because I favor you, because I love you in Jesus Christ. And that's the grace of God. He gives to us what we do not deserve. So mercy keeps us from receiving what we deserve, the judgment we deserve. And the grace of God gives us the goodness that we do not deserve. And our God is a good God. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of grace. And today, even as we prepare our hearts to pray and cry out to the Lord, I want you to do it with expectation, with this assurance that God will touch your life by His mercy and grace. Let's say this together. God will touch my life in His mercy and grace. Say it one more time. God will touch my life in His mercy and grace. God is no respecter of persons. He loves you as much as He loves your neighbor or the person sitting there next to you. He loves you, and His mercy and grace will come forth to you. After the worship team leads us in a time of worship where you can just look to God and reflect on His mercy, on His grace toward you. We are going to cry out. We're going to do what the psalm says. Just cry out to the Lord for His mercy and grace, and He will meet us at our point of need. Breakthrough, breakthrough all my doubts. Breakthrough, breakthrough all my fears. Breakthrough that I may worship you. Breakthrough, breakthrough all my pain. Breakthrough. All my guilt and my shame break through like only you can do. Sing breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough all my doubts, breakthrough, breakthrough all my fears. Breakthrough that I may worship you. Breakthrough, breakthrough all my pain. Breakthrough all my guilt and my shame. Breakthrough. 
worship team. You know, some of us may be saying, everything is fine in my life. I'm not in a wilderness. I'm not in darkness. I'm not in sickness. I am not uh, in any problem in my business. Everything is going great in my life. Well, thank God for it. Give thanks to the Lord because of all the goodness that you're enjoying. It's because of his mercy. So as we pray, I want you to do two things. I want you to just thank God that he's been so good to you, that all these things are wonderful in your life, that you thank him for it. And then also pray and say, God, there are people around me who need to experience your deliverance, who need your intervention in, my, in their lives. So I want you to pray for them. You may not know their names. It's okay. Just say, God, let, as we pray today, let many, many people all over the nation, all over the world who are connected live or connected to the service, may they experience your mercy and grace as we read in this psalm. Now, for some of us, we may find ourselves in one or more of these predicaments. There may be some of us who are in a wilderness situation where the very necessities of life are being deprived. We don't even have it. Some of us may be in a dark situation, imprisoned, bound, uh, and we just kind of went in there because of our own wrongdoing. Some of us might find ourselves in a, in a sick bed, uh, in a desperate situation. And some of us may be struggling in our work life, in our professional life, but as we pray, Regardless of what your situation is, 
the word of God is true for you, that God will intervene. I'm going to pray. You see, it's going to be a simple prayer because it's not my prayer that's going to do the thing. It's the mercy of God. It's the God in heaven who's going to intervene in your life. So as we pray, make your prayer simple. Let it be the cry of your heart to God and God will intervene. His mercy and grace will come upon you and your life and will change everything as we read in this psalm. Let's pray. Father, we pray for the many, many, many people who are connected to the service, who might find themselves in some difficult life situation, Lord, whether it's a wilderness situation, whether it's a darkness situation, whether it's a sickness situation, whether it's a workplace or a business situation or something else that we may not have even addressed today, but they find themselves there. It's a time of distress. Father, even now, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, I pray that you, O oh God, who are a good God, who are a merciful God, will intervene in their lives. And as your word says, deliver them out of their distresses. Bring them out of their difficult situation. In the name of Jesus, let the mercy, let the grace of God come upon them, bringing them out of their situations. In the authority of Jesus' name, I command your deliverance. I command the breaking of your bondages or the breaking of your chains. I command the healing of your sicknesses and your diseases in the name of Jesus. Let the power of God touch you because of the mercy and the grace of God. And may you rise up out of your sick bed. May you be delivered out of your afflictions. And Lord, for those who are going to difficulties in their business, in their workplace. Let your mercy cause the storms to be still, the waves to be still, for them to receive the wisdom they need to solve their problems. And God cause them to come to their desired haven, to their place of blessing. Let the mercy and the grace of God come upon your people. Let the mercy and the grace of God be upon every person, Father, for we cry out to you and we receive it and I declare it done in every person's life I declare their wilderness turned around into a place of blessing I declare their darkness turn, turned around into a place of great light and freedom and liberty I declare the sickness turned around into a place of complete wholeness health and well-being I declare their distress in business turned around into a place of desired haven a place of their desired blessing and prosperity and well-being I declare this by the mercies of God because of the grace of God upon you because the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever and his mercy is extended to you in and through his son Jesus Christ father we thank you for doing this for confirming your word for making your word good in the lives of your people so shall it be God and we thank you in Jesus name amen 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 you know I believe that the word of God will be fulfilled because God watches over his word to perform it. And God is the one working in your life to perform his word. You know, maybe there are people that you know who need to hear this message today. It's something for you, but it's also something for some others that you know about. What I want to request you to do is to send this message over to as many people around you. They need hope. They need encouragement. They need God's word being brought to them because God works through his word. So I want you to share this message with as many people as you can so that they can receive the work of God in their lives and you will be an instrument for their deliverance as you just pass this message on to as many people as you can so that they can be blessed. And then tell others about it. If you're meeting in your life group, if, you're, if you are going to preach somewhere, go preach this message from Psalm 107. This is God's word. This is not my message. It's God's word. So go preach it wherever you can. Tell people there's a God in heaven who's a good God, 
whose mercy endures forever, whose goodness and loving kindness is available for them today. And if they will cry out to God, he will deliver them from their distresses. Go preach this message to as many people as you can so that many will experience the work of God in their lives. Go do it. Share it with as many people as you can. We're going to close. And for those of you who would like to meet with our pastoral team in person, um, that information will come on the screen right after we close. And you're welcome to join us in our, our individual prayer rooms for personal prayer and ministry. Let's close, please. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you, and we'll see you again.